Hi, Dr. Tim Maggs here. I have another case history I'd like to go over. The one we did a couple of weeks ago with Donna was just met with such a really enthusiasm. It was wonderful to see. But these are the stories I go through every day. And it's I'd love to have a uh, you know reality TV uh, camera in my exam room, report room, and treatment room because it, it really is so exciting. We have so many people that come from three, four, five, six different offices because they couldn't find their answer. Today is gonna to show the procedures we use to identify the cause of problems that other offices don't use. Okay, so I appreciate you being here today. And again, all of this is under our structural management program. And under that program, we have the Concerned Parents of Young Athletes. And this is today about a 14-year-old uh, boy who plays football. So <clears throat> before we get started, let me give you the foundation of all of this. From the moment we stand and the moment little children stand, the clock starts ticking because the musculoskeletal system and the nervous system is now under the influence of gravity, of aging, of slips and falls. And here you can see that we have a young man in his adolescent years, but if you look at uh, his left hand, if you look at his left knee, you can see they are not, are not aligned like the right side is. So nowhere in our healthcare industry or in our sports medicine industry, does anyone ever look and find out why that is? But that is what causes the problems. These imbalances are what cause the problems. So we have our Sapoya program and we look at the biomechanics. And in the biomechanics, we have proven that all imbalances originate in the feet. There's a domino-like effect going up the structure. And in time, one or more areas of everyone's body is going to start to break down prematurely. So today we have uh, Augie Albright in the blue shirt. Augie's a football player at Scotia Glenville with his dad, Steve Albright, wonderful guys. And Augie came in and Augie had a tear in his left quadricep muscle. Now, how did this happen? Because that's not a common injury. But <clears throat> Augie had the ball and he's running towards the, the end zone full speed and his left quadricep blew out and it tore. And we had an MRI report and you could see a, a partial thickness, non-retracted tear of the deep muscle fibers measuring seven centimeters long. Okay, that's a pretty good tear. And that puts him out where he's limping, he's on crutches and uh, it's a severe injury. But the question is, if he's running in a symmetrical fashion, why did the left quadricep tear and the right one didn't? And that's what we're going to get into. Now, for any of you who knows Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard is a superstar basketball player. Kawhi Leonard's basketball career has been hampered by quadricep tears. Hampered. Now, why is this so important? Because Kawhi Leonard makes $42,490,000 a year, and he doesn't know what's causing these injuries, but Augie does. That's why it's so exciting. And, and Kawhi Leonard and the other hundreds of thousands of people out there who are getting these injuries, they don't understand why the injuries occur and the injuries come back. So let's, let's show what we have. Here is Augie's injury and this is we're looking at the back of the individual and his injuries in the front but you can see the imbalances in the feet the imbalances in the knees the unlevelness of the hips and so what happens is as you use your muscles they will accumulate toxins and i've told my story so many times i pulled calf muscles over an eight-year period 70 to 80 times and i didn't know how to fix them until i learned and we developed our muscle management program. We learned how to keep muscles clean so their tolerance is so much greater. If you're not keeping them clean, if you're only using them, doing strength training and running and training, they become a congested sponge. You know that hard sponge. You run into warm water and squeeze it and all of a sudden it becomes much better. But the muscle doesn't do that. So the muscle accumulates these toxins. And then at a certain point, when the left quadricep has accumulated so much more because it's under so much stress relative to the right quadricep, the straw that breaks the camel's back occurs and that tears. Now in the rest of the sports world, they will let it heal on mother nature's clock 
and then bring Augie back. And we take it that step further to find out the cause of the injury. So here we have Augie. We're going to take our x-rays. You can see that right foot is rotated out. And why would that right foot be rotated out? It's rotated out because when one leg is longer than the other, the body has a tendency to rotate that foot out to maintain balance. So this is an early indicator for us that we assume there's going to be a leg length difference. Then we do our test and we see how far does that hip allow the leg to go down on the right side. And there you can see it is not the same on the left side. So that tells you that the hip flexors in that low back, the left side is much tighter than the right side. That's due to the imbalances below that cause that muscle to contract more. So again, very obvious tests that show us there's an imbalance. So we take our x-ray while barefooted and you can see that uh, Augie's right hip, just below the 4.6 millimeters, is 4.6 millimeters higher than the left hip, but this is barefoot. And we know that when it's barefoot, the collapse of the feet combined with the leg lengths give you a number. In Augie's case, it's 4.6 millimeters, three and below is normal. On the side view, we can see that long vertical line is the center of gravity. However, it should be merged with that short red line. And, and therefore, we can see Augie's center of gravity is forward of where it should be, putting abnormal loading through specific areas of the body. There's tissue doing work that is not equipped to do the work. So that's a finding that we have. So we know that Augie's feet are collapsed because if you go to the website, drtimmags.com, scroll down, see the eight research studies, number five, we scanned 1,001 patients. 1,001 patients have collapse of the feet, varying degrees of collapse of the feet. We don't even do that test anymore. We start with orthotics. So you have to put orthotics in the shoes to begin to fix the biomechanics because the foundation of the body is the feet. The feet has to be symmetrical. They have to be even. So therefore, we're able to put our orthotics in the shoes and then we know the feet are fixed. But we also know that that alters the hip height. So he's already abnormal, 4.6. And then we put orthotics in the shoes and retake the x-ray and he goes to 7.6. Well, I never knew prior to 2017, I never knew this was a possibility. But this is what started me on my course of research to learn that there are five independent crooked men, imbalanced structures. This is a crooked man too. So you can see crooked man too. If you look at that structure and you can see the left hip is higher than the right hip. And if you put orthotics in those shoes, that left hip is going to go even higher. So the interesting thing is that no one else does this testing. My goal is to get this testing in the pros, get this testing in colleges, in high schools, and for all people, because this measurement right here now is the one I call the most important measurement you can have on your body. Because think about it, if your hips aren't level, that low back isn't level, the discs aren't level, the weight bearing in your hips and your knees aren't even, and that's what leads to joint injury, joint replacement, disc injury, uh, disc um, hernias, disc bulges, and this is the measurement that you have to have. So in Augie's case, what we will do is put a seven millimeter lift under his left orthotic, and that should get it very close to normal. So here you can see, we put the lift on very easy. Then what we do is we use kinesio tape during his course of treatment. We saw Augie three times a week. We laser because laser increases ATP, which is the chemical in the body that heals. It reduces pain, inflammation, heals faster than any other therapy. And within, I'd say, two weeks, we had Augie back to the point that now he's talking about, can I start running again? And this went from a seven millimeter tear, which should take weeks to get better, we had Augie back to a point in two weeks where he was very excited to start running. So we're just at that point right now. Tremendous case, but Kawhi Leonard needs that those x-rays and needs orthotics to ever find out why he's continually injured. 
And this applies to all humans. So the next time someone says to you, I have a blank, 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 and I can't do X, Y, or Z, let them know that they need orthotics and they need to, at the very least, have that x-ray with orthotics in the shoes to determine what the hip height difference and to get a lift. And if you do that, any human will be 50% better than before doing it. So the muscle injuries that always address the underlying biomechanics first, reduce exercise and training until it's healed. Don't try to exercise the muscle. It needs to heal. And then the key is once the pain is over, go another week. That muscle isn't ready to jump into activity the day you don't feel pain. Use a foam roller or the stick as a prevention of future injuries. And laser is extremely beneficial for healing. So there you have it. And that's Augie's story. And it's a great story. And we're so happy for him. And I want to thank uh, Steve and Augie for allowing us to use their case to tell this story. Have a great day.